prepare everyone. It's time for our reporting. But before we proceed to our discussion, may I call on Ms. Kennelly Camila to lead the prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us for your protection and we love. We thank you. Help us to focus our heart and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen today. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good day, Professor. Good day, classmates. Our report for today is all about service management. I am Lerma Reyes. I am Katrina Perez. I am Princess Mara Elaine A. Takas Takas. I am Roxanne Maramara. I am Diane Tinoria. I am Kim Dohata. And I'm Kennedy Camilo. I am Sophia Nicole Grisamstoma. And we are the presenters for today. Service management. Service management is related with delivering service to the customers of the service. It involves understanding the service needs of the target customers, managing the process that deliver the, the service, ensuring objectives are met, while also paying attention to the constant improvement of the service. Service management is a management discipline aimed at providing quality service that customers will value, buy, and use so that it is really important in every company because all company has a service management. Even if they offer only a product, the product will go to the market and to end user by the help of service. So if the service won't manage well, it can affect the process. Also, consumer will not be satisfied. It may result in more problems. In order for us to understand more about this topic, here is the characteristic of service. Services have mainly five unique characteristics compared to goods. First is intangibility. The primary characteristic that distinguishes services from goods is the quality of not being able to touch, taste, see, or smell. Services such as education, insurance, medical, etc. cannot be physically possessed like tangible goods. Services are not tangible while products are. Services are produced and consumed at the same time. And services are inconsistent. And also the user participate in the productions of service. To summarize it all, service is an act of labor or performance that does not produce a tangible commodity and does not result in the customer's ownership of anything. Its productions may or may not be tied to a physical product, thus there are pure services that involve no tangible product as my example here is psychotherapy. Tangible goods with accompanying service such as computer software package with free software support and hybrid product services that consists of parts of each. For instance, restaurants are usually patronized for both their food and their service. Alright, that would be my part. The next reporter will be Kenny Lee Camilo. Hello everyone, I'm Kenny and we will continue to discuss the characteristic in a service. So the second one is the intangibility. So it means that inability of a consumer to pre-assess the value of using a service. Unlike a physical product, a service cannot be seen, tasted, felt, heard, or smelled prior to its purchase. This makes it hard to evaluate the quality. So the best example in this characteristic is the mobile services. So the third one is the heterogeneity. Services have the characteristic of heterogeneity. They vary in output and mistake happened in a real time. So the best example in these services is, la is in live concert, like singing, dancing, comedy show, and theater, and etc. So the fourth one is the perishability. So perishability is used in marketing to describe the way in which a service capacity cannot be stored for sale in the future. 
services cannot be stored, saved, returned, or resold once they have been used. So, the fifth one is the ownership. In the sale of goods, after the completion of the process, the goods are the transfer in the name of the buyer and he becomes the owner of the goods. But in the case of the services, the users have only access to the services. They cannot own the services. The best example of the ownership services is the membership of a gym. Good day everyone, my name is Roxanne Maramara. Classification of service. Services are classified into two groups, which are services in consumer market and services in industrial market. Services and consumer market in this market involve individual purchasing goods and services. For personal use, they may purchase electronic items, food and beverages, recreational services, clothing, transportation, and financial services. The following services come under this category, a food services. Food services are offered by hotels, restaurants, and catering services. Food is supplied in restaurant as well as delivered to customer residents. B. Boarding and lodging services. These services are provided by hotels and lodgers to the people who travel to distant places. C. Personal care services. These are the services provided to meet the personal care needs of customers like health, appearance, and physical fitness, etc. And for the last one, the entertainment services. These services include cinema, drama, dance, music, amusement park, and cable TV, etc. While in the industrial service market, industrial marketing or business-to-business -business marketing is the market of goods and services by one business to another. Industrial goods are those an industry uses to produce and end of product from one or more raw material. And that would be my part. May I call on Ms. Katrina Perez for the next reporter. Good day everyone. This is Katrina Perez and I will be the one to discuss the second classification of service, which is the service and industrial market. The following services come under this category. First, we have financial services. Finance is essential for carrying out business operation. Companies require both short-term and long-term finance. These are our commercial banks, BDO, BPI, P that secures our money. Also, this category includes um, investment banks. So if you want to be an investor and invest your money for a certain company, that would be under financial services. So next, we do have insurance service. Um, all business units are exposed to variety of risks. Insurance companies provide necessary protection against risk such as fire, marine losses, theft, and accidents. So most company are availing insurance for their company in case of emergency like fire. And there are also insurance for life. Now we do have life insurance. We do have um, house insurance. We do have car insurance. And there is Sun Life. There is Edwana. So next, we do have transport services. Business units require transport services for moving men and materials to the factory and men finish goods from factory. These services are provided by various transport companies by means of trains, trucks, buses, ships, and airplanes. So this also includes jeepneys because we use jeepneys as our transportation. We do also have tricycles for land. We do have bus, bike, motorbikes, and for water transportation, we do have um, ships, boats, and for air transportation, we do have airplanes or helicopters. Basically, transport service is providing service for us to transport ourselves from one place to another. That's all for my report. Thank you so much for listening. Good day, sir, and also to our classmates. My name is Diane Tenorio, and I will be the one who will continue discussing about the industrial market services. So, the following services come under also in this category, which is the warehousing service. Generally, it is an essential service that allows business to manage the distribution of goods to consumers. Also, some of the examples of these are transloading, order fulfillment, and inventory control. The second one is advertising service.
For example, a company might create an ads campaign to meet one of the following business objectives such as create brand awareness for a new product and to drive also sales or product and services that they have. And lastly, the consultancy service. Like for example, operations consulting, they have, um, they could have be tasked to help reduce costs, uh, increase productivity, and also improve the company itself. And it's more likely to improve the practice of improving performance through analysis and development of the plan that they have also. That's all. Thank you so much for listening. Good day, sir. I am Princess Maria Elaine A. Takas Takas, and I will be the one to discuss benefits of enterprise service management. One of the benefits of enterprise service management is improve efficiency and reduce operational costs. Efficiency is defined as the ability to produce something with the minimum amount of effort. An example of efficiency is a reduction in the number of workers needed to make a car. Efficiency is about making the best possible use of resources. Efficiency firms maximize outputs from given inputs and so minimize their cost. By improving efficiency, a business can reduce its cost and improve its competitiveness. Second is maximize your ROI and on a corporate ITSM solution. To calculate the ROI of your service management solution, there are several factors to take under consideration. These factors include the number of tickets handled each month, the percentage of tickets reduced, the average cost of each ticket, and monthly licensing cost. That's all of my part. May I call on the next reporter, please? Enterprise service management maximizes self-service um, efficiencies. When used with self-service technology, enterprise um, service management maximizes self-service efficiency. The different types of self-service um, capabilities includes the ability to search for HR requests, facility requests, um, marketing requests, or any other need. The, um, it works together to increase uh, the use of enterprise service management to boost productivity. And um, this benefit is highlighting that through self-service, there is a potential of um, labor savings and less uh, stress for the employees. So efficiency meaning to produce um, something without wasting materials, time, or energy. Basically, this means that um, meeting your end goal um, with little to no waste effort or energy. And the next one is improve communication and collaboration across your company. A team that knows how to um, collaborate is comfortable in sharing ideas and adding new processes and tools that uh, to the table. That level of participation means that teammates can communicate with each other in a clear and direct manner. And this um, level of um, effort and um, uh, this, that could lead to more innovations, efficient and processes, and it could increase um, success and improve communications. So uh, through listening and learning from teammates, you can help each other to reach your end goal. So that would be my part and I thank you so much for um, listening. So the benefits of enterprise service management number five, improve visibility and governance within your organization. The use of ITS and technology that staff and management understand what has been achieved and what hasn't. It ultimately gives insight into the value that each business function provides and make it easier for this to be communicated to customers and other business stakeholders. Just as employees can benefit from seeing each other's progress, managers can more easily track project and ticket status with an ESN solution. This improves visibility, giving managers the insights they need to properly govern within micromanaging or wasting time. It also provides insight into areas where employees may need additional help. Number six, dramatically improves standardization 
within your organization. This is not only business-wide optimized processes, but also a common way of working, a common look and feel, and a common service model for employees. It also offers the potential to provide a single point of service, no matter the service provide company-wide. Consistent rules and standard procedures across the organization can lead to an overall better experience for employees and teams as a whole. Using a self-service portal combined with the knowledge, management database, and enterprise service management solution, employees will spend less time searching for potentially outdated procedures. And lastly, number seven, deliver a better customer experience. Enterprise service management apps to corporate service provider came to better deliver against employee expectations across ease of use, self-service, service request catalogs, knowledge availability, and self-help, social or collaborative capabilities, anytime and any place access to service and information, and people or customer-centric support. When employees are spending less time searching for answers and jumping through hoops within the organization, it results in a better experience for customers outside of the organization. When employees can make internal requests between business units more quickly, it boils down to a better experience for customers. That's all. Thank you.